Hello and welcome to Alberta. We are here with Destination Canada and we are in for five full days of adventure and accessible activities and I cannot wait to bring you with me. Arrival night in Alberta and it is time for some delicious food in Calgary. First night in Calgary and I'm at this restaurant called Chokunin. This will sound dramatic. Okay, this might be controversial. I've traveled the world. I've eaten at some of the most delicious restaurants you could imagine. I think this is the best restaurant I've ever tried. Every single bite of every single thing I've had has been insane. The chef is named Darren, the head chef, the owner. Nicest man. Every single thing I've had is just literally mind-blowing. I can't even fathom. And they use this, which is like a charcoal. It's like the cleanest burning charcoal in the world to cook with. And it's, there's, the whole restaurant is this idea of like being multi-sensory, so smelling the smokiness of the charcoal and the textures and the flavors and the smells and everything is just incredible. 10 out of 10, actually 20 out of 10. This is crazy. Yeah, so that's a whole strip loin from an A5 Wagyu strip loin. And we, cut, we uh, salt it, we let it sit for two weeks, and then we wrap it in beeswax and age it for another four to six weeks. So you're saying inside of this there's beef? There's beef, yeah. I can cut it open, I'll show you. Uh, and you, you can touch that. But what it is is that um, beeswax is antimicrobial, so it's an amazing aging agent. That's it, say that three times. Aging agent, aging, aging agent, agent, aging agent. Aging agent, yeah. Uh, and it's really, really wonderful because what it can do is it, what it gives you, you know, $150 a pound. At three ounces that we served you, like 150 bucks. It'd be like 200 if we dry aged it traditionally because you lose 30 to 40% yield. So this allows us to increase the flavor without losing the yield and try to keep it as reasonably priced as we can. Yeah. So really, really special stuff. <laughs> I actually don't know if I'm going to share. <laughs> the, the most important part of like any meal is how it tastes. Everybody says you eat with your eyes first, but I think it doesn't matter what it looks like. If it doesn't taste good, it doesn't matter. First full day and it is city adventures galore. It is my first full day in Alberta. I am spending all day today in Calgary and the first stop of a very packed day of fun adventures is Studio Bell, which is the home of the National Music Center. As I shared in the intro, this video, this trip is all about accessible tourism here in Alberta. And so obviously music is something that pretty much all of us can enjoy. And my cane and I have come to have a very multi-sensory museum experience. You know, I hunt down galleries and museums that are multi-sensory and interactive because that's what makes it fun for me as a blind tourist. So I cannot wait to enjoy and experience this. So I did pick up this headset and device situation that they have for blind guests here at the museum. And basically this is gonna give me an auditory tour. So everything is super interactive already. And obviously with it being music, it's very auditory, but this is fun because it does describe some of the imagery that I would be missing out on. And it also describes the architecture, which is so interesting. This building has actually been designed to look like you are inside of a guitar, which is fun because I've obviously felt guitars before, so I have an idea in my head of what the building must look like. And so when it's being described to me, I'm thinking of what I know a guitar feels like and using that to create an image in my mind. So I'm very excited. Let's keep going. Okay, so this is the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. And look, I'm biased. I grew up in Toronto, right? I'm, I think Canada has some of the best musicians out there my humble opinion. Um, we've got some icons on this board, like Shania Twain, Sarah McLaughlin, Alanis Morissette, and so many other good ones. Do you guys know how I can see light? It's really weird because I can't see the color of light, but I can see lights. And then there's certain colors that I can't see at all. Like I can never seem to see red or blue lights, but there's these blue and pink lights on the floor. I cannot see the blue ones at all, but the pink ones, I can see enough, not to know that they're pink, but I've been told they're pink. So, ooh, ooh, over there, over there. So I keep chasing them. Ooh, look right there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hello. I have found myself <clears throat> at the piano, my favorite place to be as an avid pianist. This is an original I'm gonna play for you, and I call it Elton Hates the Rain. 
Thank you so much. I will be uh, selling tickets for my world tour starting on September 4th. Little known fact, I actually did used to play the drums. I begged for singing lessons, and instead my parents gave me drum lessons. I actually was really good at it because it takes some coordination, and I feel like as a blind person I actually have very good coordination. The spatial awareness of like learning where all of the actual drums and cymbals were was the most challenging part. Uh, I was 11 when I started my drum lessons. It's sad, you can't hear the masterpiece I'm gonna make on this snare. Perhaps a little known fact about me, I was in fact the lead singer of an angsty punk rock band as a teenager. More pop punk, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and our original name was Audio Breakdown. But then we shifted members, we uh, changed drummers, and we got a rhythm guitar player and a lead guitar player. Originally we were a four-piece band, but then we became a five-piece band. Three girls, two boys. We had the boys on guitar, and then I was lead singer. We had a female bass player and a female drummer, and our second name became Bury Me Fighting. And we mostly did covers, but we also did originals. And we would play at festivals, like local festivals. We'd play at fundraisers. We'd play at local bars and cafes. And uh, that was my high school years. And then I dated the lead guitar player for nine months, and we broke up and uh, then the band tried to stay together. And um, we only lasted a couple months after that as a band. And then we broke up and I became a solo artist, released my own EP, and then I quit music. I think it's best for everybody's sanity that I keep the headphones hung up and I do not go back to my days of singing, so. Okay, we're done here, we're on to the next place. But they were just laughing because we went to the wrong floor and I did a very blind girl thing. The doors started to close and what do you do? You just stick your cane in it so that way it doesn't close on anyone. It's noon on a Tuesday, which seems like a good time to be enjoying some gin to me. So, I have come to the Burwood Distillery. If you guys know me, you know I'm a cocktail girly and specifically my favorite mixer is gin. So, today, I not just get to enjoy tasting some gin, I get to make my own gin. This is my friend Tyler here, and we are both going to be enjoying gin together. He runs the classes here at Bur Burwood Distillery. I already have tongs in hand. There is many things in front of me in jars. Yep. That is what I know thus far. We're gonna explore and experience this together. So, what's first? So, the way we usually start the class is by picking the recipe that we're gonna make with our gin. Our recipes are really customizable, which is great. So we've got, I think, over 60 botanicals here that you can pick from. Uh, so you can either sort of go wild and follow your own thing, or we sort of have some recipes set up for you. So today we're going to do a gin that I like to call the floral and piney gin. So it's traditional, but has this really nice sort of floral accent, which um, Molly's from Ireland, so we're going to add a little bit of heather. Let's get into it. I'm very excited. Are these, like, these are all the different botanicals in front of me? Exactly. I'm not great with chopsticks, and these just feel like giant chopsticks. Yes, there's definitely classes where people are using oh. their fingers, so if that's working for you better, my hands are my eyes, so that'll uh, probably start to happen at some point. 19.44. You're pretty good. I think I'll maybe add one more berry. One more berry, a singular? Singular berry. Okay, stop, I'm already killing it. Okay, I'm gonna finish up this recipe and then I will meet you for step two. We've got the cup full to the brim of ingredients and it smells so good. So now we actually have to turn it from this into gin. And how do we do that, Tyler? So we're gonna flavor the gin exactly the same way as we do in the back with these little mini pot stills. So we're gonna combine our botanicals with a little bit of just neutral spirit. It's gonna heat up and it, that's gonna macerate those ingredients, pull out the essential oils, and then it's gonna start to boil. So once the alcohol starts boiling, those vapors are gonna carry the essential oils through the still and it's gonna reach this part, which is the condenser, and get turned back into a liquid, and then that's how we're gonna collect it. Well, that does its thing. I'm gonna enjoy a lavender honey cocktail. Yeah, we need to relax. Cheers. Bees knees. This cocktail is gin, honey, and lavender, and it's called a lavender bees knees. I've never heard of anything more me in my life. I have some good news. The gin is done. Look at this. I named it Elton's Brew, although best believe I will be consuming it and he will be watching whilst drinking a bowl of water. This is Elton's Brew coming to stores near you. It is time to try Elton's Brew, which thinking back, I should have named Elton's Water, 
I think that would have been very funny, but in the moment I wasn't as funny as I am now. We ended up with Elton's brew. Here we go. Well, that'll just punch you right in the gut. Look at that. Oh, I really actually taste the lavender. The lavender really comes through actually the most strongly of anything we've put in here. I just had an absolutely spectacularly delicious lunch at Orchard. It was so good. They had this grilled cheese. It was like Asian inspired grilled cheese with beef in it. Was that not incredible, Mom? Fabulous. fabulous. And now I'm gonna head in and do another so me thing. Okay, whoever planned the schedule for this trip, they know me very well. I'm gonna go make a candle. And it's so funny because I'm clearly so used to having Elton with me. I stepped out of the car and I was just like, all right, let's go make candles. And my mom's like, do you want your, do you want your cane? And I was like, all right, I'm used to my mobility aid just jumping out and following me. I have come to Milk Jar, not to be confused with my favorite cookie place that shut down in Los Angeles. <gasps> My heart still warns. There's a milk jar here in Calgary where we make candles. So that is what I'm gonna do and it smells so good in here. You walk in and it's like phew, the scent throw from these candles, insane. It is so fragrant in here and I get to pick my own fragrance and make my own candle, which is very exciting. Okay, so obviously the most exciting thing about making my own candle is making my own fragrance for that candle and they actually have a braille book with their most popular scents. So I get to pick top, middle, base. And I don't know, my thing in 2024 has been a love of fragrance and like learning everything there is to know. So I feel like I've been preparing for this very moment. We're doing the yeses and the noes. So far in the no category, basil. I like real basil, but the scent didn't, it, it smelled almost like licorice to me. It's interesting, I almost get the feeling that I'm smelling mint more than I smell the mint. Does that make sense? So when I like, think of scents that I like, I like warm and cozy, woodsy, like sandalwood, vanilla, those kind of scents. I like more of like an earthy leaning gourmand versus like a sickly sweet gourmand. I don't like florals and I don't like bakery, like super bakery, like um, birthday cake, bubblegum, cotton candy. I don't like that kind of stuff and I don't like florals like lily, that kind of thing but I love like lemon, citrus. I love spa scents, very bright, fresh, citrusy scents, and then very like warm, cozy, woodsy scents. Those are my favorite profiles. So I'm trying to make something, I'm getting to make two scents. So maybe like one warm, woodsy, cozy, the other like either spa or fresh, bright. I've officially made my two fragrance mixes and I'm gonna put one in here, which is a diffuser oil, and one in here, which will be a Woodwick candle. So these are what I created, my scent mixes. This one, which is for my candle, it's like warm and cozy, yet there's still a freshness to it. It is lavender, chamomile, lemongrass, and vanilla. And I'm gonna call it LT Hugs for Mr. Elton McMelton. This one, is really good. It's very fresh, very spa-like, and it's green tea, cucumber, mint, eucalyptus, and bergamot. You know, there's a lot of things I will do, but pouring the wax isn't gonna be one of them today. I think Molly and hot wax pouring into a small vessel is a no, so I'm gonna let somebody else handle that aspect. I've made my LT Hugs candle. It smells so cozy and yummy and then a little diffuser oil. It has been a long day and I'm ready for a rest. Day two and it is time for some adaptive sports and adventures with tandem cycling and kayaking. Okay, adaptive sports. We all know how much I love adaptive sports. So today I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff with Rocky Mountain Adaptive in Canmore. Is that the name of this place? Yeah. Canmore, <laughs> got it, nailed it. And I want to show off some of the adaptive equipment, most of which would not be for somebody like me, but they have all different things. So I wanna show you guys because I just think it's fun. And I feel like it's so fun to teach non-disabled people, but also to raise awareness for newly disabled people because I feel like when you're newly disabled, you often don't know what is available in terms of adaptive sports. So let's check it out and see what you can do. All right, what equipment do we have here to make it adaptive for kayaking? Absolutely, so starting with paddles, um, anybody who struggles with grip strength or continuously holding a paddle for a long period of time, uh, we have two models. So this one, you just slide your hand in and we can tighten it nice and tight to wherever a grip may be or where you might need that to be. Um, and yeah, and then that just kind of helps you 
paddle and keep the paddle uh, kind of as one with your person. Um, and yeah, and then same thing with this, if anybody had limited grip strength, um, we could just put on these handy dandy bracelets um, and then it would just be this motion rather than gripping onto the paddle um, as that can be super tiring for some of our participants. So this we call our tanker. Um, the tanker. This is our high volume boat. Um, and essentially we have an adjustable seat here that we can put um, along this track system, um, depending on how large your furry friend is that would be joining you. Large, very large. <laughs> um, and yeah, and so we would just put you here, Elton John right in front of you. Um, and he's got tons of room to, uh, to go and enjoy the paddle with you. He would have loved it. <laughs> he would have loved it. Although honestly, it was enough of a workout me paddling just myself. <laughs> so me paddling an extra 70 pounds around. We'll just have to get you back next time. He would have been. Well, <laughs> he would have been. There's life jackets for doggies. Oh, we gotta find the, life the service dogs of the little life jackets, <laughs> which would be great because I don't think Elton's a good swimmer. I'm not gonna lie. Um, sometimes holding a paddle in itself for a long period of time can be extremely exhausting. Um, and so this paddle pivot essentially just takes that load off for a paddler and lets them paddle for longer. Um, we've had participants who never been able to paddle for longer than 20 minutes and with our paddle pivot have been able to go for almost a two-hour session. Wow. So it's an incredible piece of equipment. It just removes that weight off of somebody. Sometimes people who uh, maybe don't have as much core function um, really rely on our padding on each side to really keep them up straight. Um, as we know, balance is very important when it comes to being in a boat on water. And yeah, and so with these support setups, uh, this just helps with stability, um, helps them be in, in line and uh, really keep their weight in the center of the boat where we need it to be cool yeah and lastly we have our pontoons which are our most popular piece of equipment um these i mean it's i don't want to say impossible but i have given it my all trying to tip a boat with these pontoons on um and have yet to be successful so um this can help with somebody's confidence on the water uh, and help keep people stable um, if they do have some balance issues um and my favorite thing about these is that they're actually adjustable so they kind of have a training wheel effect where uh Maybe the first time on the water, we start with them super out wide, help you get comfortable in the water, really help with that confidence, and then you get to see where your balance is. Um, if we take this out, maybe second time on the water comes around, and we, and we actually bring them all the way in. So this way, you feel a little bit more of that tip. You're getting a little bit more used to that kind of how that can go and then the third time maybe you're ready to go and we just take the training wheels right off um, and so that's what I really love about our pontoons. I'm a pro though no training wheels required here. Out of your boat? Is that to make sure I don't yeah, nice capsize? Keeps nice and stable keeps your jacket <laughs> nice and warm and dry um, and you like those we can add those to your boat no problem. What do you think Neve? should I take a risk is it more fun <laughs> if I might tip? <laughs> I can never like hold things level it's incredible yeah. how much you use your sight for like leveling anything yeah. the other day i was like bringing my dinner out from the kitchen yeah. and i was like trying to decide if i take like the bowls of food or the drinks and for some reason i just had the conversation with my boyfriend about how i always spill stuff and then i chose to take the drinks and i spill them because i'm like holding them like si sideways and he's like it's not level i'm like i don't know how to hold things level i can't <laughs> oh i put my head here okay Oh, oh, where am I? What is going on? Feel free, feel free to dress me like I'm four, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, just come up a little bit. Is there water here? Will I get my feet wet? Okay, great. Perfect, yeah. So just to the... Sorry, I have to turn around left and right. It's so bad for me. Just the right, exactly that. So I sit with my feet exactly. this direction? Right, right towards me, exactly. Um, you just need to remember these four steps. So the first step is to just completely, so I'm going to give you your paddle just so that you know how to get in and out. Yeah, I just realized I could use my cane as a... There you go. <laughs> I already feel like I'm going to have to pee at some point. <laughs> it's not great. Thanks, guys. You're on the water, girl. <laughs> Perfect. So we have Chloe and Shay. Um, so they're just going to help you out today just by like, if we need to turn, they'll just use language like two on the left kind of thing, just to point the nose of your boat uh, to where we need to be. I went completely blank. I was just fully daydreaming. <laughs> I guess I should remember I'm the only blind one on the water right now. Here we're seeing some footage of Molly and the rest of the group very professionally kayaking on the lake. Molly's looking like her usual cute self. And then we move on to the bike riding. We see some footage of Molly on a tandem bike riding around on a path in a grassy foresty area.
Pro tip when you're riding a tandem bike and you get a little tired, see this, nobody will ever know. <laughs> we all know, I've said so many times, the hardest part about being blind, the most frustrating thing is the lack of freedom of movement. Like always feeling like you are tied to someone or something else. If I go for a run, I have to be tethered or on a treadmill. If I am walking, I have a cane, a guide dog or sighted guide. If I'm on a bike, it is a tandem. Um, and so I never get to just like move freely on my own. And part of the hard part about riding a bike is like on my own, if it wasn't tandem, is not only the fact that I can't see where I'm steering, but also the lack of balance. Like I can't physically balance myself enough, but this removes that barrier. So what is this thing called? This is called a uh, bowhead row. A bowhead row. Yes. I'll be fine. Okay, ready? Ready? Yeah. Ready? You're not in the way, are you? No. Okay. She goes! <laughs> Third full day, and we are hitting up the one and only, the glorious Bamf. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Guess where we are? Bamf. Bamf! <laughs> got my Banff sweater on. I am fully prepared. I'm in Banff National Park today. I could not be more excited. I mean, this is one of those experiences that I think most nature lovers dream of and it feels so surreal to actually be here. It's so hard to explain because obviously I can't see all of the physical beauty around me, but like I can, just standing here, I can feel the vastness. It feels so incredible and I felt like a perfect way to experience it as somebody who can't physically see the beauty is to go on a Lake Minnewonka boat cruise in the middle of the park. I almost spilt my own drink. <laughs> Wouldn't want to do that. Okay, hello. Hi, it's me. I am so excited. I have had, honestly, a little bit too much good food on my trip in Alberta, but tonight, it might take the cake, pun intended. I am here at Eden, which is a multi-award winning restaurant in Banff with, there's three tasting menu options, two seven course, one vegetarian, one not, and a four course. I have big decisions to be made. I need a glass of sparkling rosé to help me along. So that's in hand, beautiful views by my side that I cannot see but can still enjoy the ambiance. Okay, so Victoria, who has been our absolutely wonderful, fabulous guide for the past four days, we accidentally, okay, the whole time I've been like, our style is very on par. Like in everything she says about her husband, I'm like I feel like my boyfriend and I, and you and your husband, we would just be such good friends. And all, like all we, I'm like, where'd you get that top? Oh, I like that. Yeah, Ooh, what that's like. And then tonight we show up for dinner in the lobby of the hotel. We are fully <laughs> matching. We have got <laughs> white crop top, black long floor length maxi skirts, open jackets over top. This was a complete surprise. We yeah. feel like we're starting a cult. <laughs> The amouge bouche has arrived. We are starting the meal strong because their amouge bouche is designed to be eaten with your hands. And as a blind girly, I love that because that's how I prefer to eat everything. And it's also vegan, which I think is cool because it makes sure that everybody who comes and eats here has something they can eat um, because they do have a vegan tasting menu as well. So we love. Cheers. A little cucumber, melon, what's it called? Gusmacha, thank you, that's why you're here. Pour some delicious Rocky Mountain water for you. Lens and lemons on the table. Stop it right now, that is so damn good. Our second course is arriving and I cannot wait. I'm most excited about the pickled. I love anything pickled and I've never tried a pickled carrot. Not that I know which on this plate is pickled because there's so many options. I'm most skeptical about the gelled, gelled carrot. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm intrigued. Okay, wait, this is carrot. Okay, fascinating. Okay, where do I go next? I, I don't even know how to eat. Not fancy enough to eat this food. I don't know how to eat it. Okay, do I go here? Oh, I think that's the gelled. Feels like gelled carrot. Mm. Mm. No, I love carrot. This is very good. <laughs> Maybe by the end of this, I'll be able to see. Two more bites and I'll let you know. Mountains, there's mountains. <laughs> and a bear. 
The meal is complete. The belly is full. Actually, so is, so is my bladder, if I'm being honest. I do have to piddle. <laughs> this was... Dude, I'm dead. I have to piddle. Sorry, we're, we're laughing. We're in the middle of a recording. No, no, no worries. Silly. We're just laughing because I'm being stupid. Too many wine pairings. Mal is getting silly and has to piddle. <laughs> <laughs> the food review. Still a full bladder, still a full stomach. And very satisfied. This was very delicious. Seven courses turned into somehow 10 because never in my life have I had a pre-dessert dessert until tonight. There was two amouche bouche. There was the beginning and a middle palate cleanser. It was really delicious. And most importantly, the staff were so fabulous. Phenomenal, Phenomenal staff. So I am ready for a big cozy sleep. Day four, final full day, and it is time for a little bit of relaxation. Today I went forest bathing, and it was such a nice experience to just get in touch with nature, feel more grounded, at peace. Like, it's so hard in our busy city lives to find that sense of just calm. It felt like a little bit of meditation, and I really needed it. Final day in Banff and we are doing it right. I have come to the Fairmont Banff Springs for afternoon tea, which I just love. It's so delightful. So I have my tea here, just finished steeping. I decided to go with Earl Grey because it's just the classic. Get the real experience. And then we also get like some sparkling wine from BC, delightful. And the first course has arrived, which is good because I'm hungry. And it is a scone with the clotted cream. All scones, in my opinion, need clotted cream. I ate all of my sandwiches. Absolutely delicious, 10 out of 10. My favorite was the deviled ham. What was your favorite, Mom? Egg. Yeah, I love egg. Well, we have an egg yolk looking dessert on here, apparently, <laughs> um, which is lemon. I love a lemon dessert and I love a chocolate dessert. And there's also a madeleine, which I'm really looking forward to trying. Time to head back to LA and reunite with Elton. I am home matcha in hand because girl, I need it. That was the most packed, adventurous, fun-filled, diverse trip I have had in a long time. And you guys know me, I'm a traveling girl. That was incredible. Truly, I had four full days, five nights uh, between Calgary, Canmore and Banff, three amazing destinations in Alberta, Canada. And I feel like sometimes we can forget to explore where we're from. We can forget to explore our home country. And I'm guilty of that at times. I feel like I've been to a lot of different parts of Canada, but like quickly on business trips where I'm in, I do a speech, I do my thing, I'm out. And it was so nice to actually get to spend time in Alberta. The food, wow, so good. I, I honestly felt quite speechless. Like my, my mom was there with me and we were like, so we're coming back in a few months, right? Uh, Victoria was pivotal. She was an amazing part of our adventure. Like, I feel like I made a lifelong friend who absolutely next time I'm in, I'm in Alberta, like ring, ring, I'll be calling her up and uh, having her show me around more of Alberta. I really want to go back and do a ski trip in Banff. Like, how amazing would that be with Rocky Mountain Adaptive or, or another adaptive sports? There's so much adaptive sports out there for disabled folks. There's just so much to do, like from the, the, the city vibes, to the more like nature outdoorsy stuff. I really feel like there's something for everybody. And my mom was like, I've got to take your dad here. I was like, I've got to take my boyfriend here. I really can't recommend it enough. And I can see why Calgary is one of those places that like consistently ranks on top 10 cities in the world to live. I feel like I said, it just like, has so many different things to offer. It really feels like a cultural melting pot, which lends itself to amazing ethnic foods. On my last day, I feel like I ended the super packed busy time like the right way with just a nice, that nice forest bathing meditation moment, then an afternoon tea. After that, I went and I had a massage at the spa. It was the perfect way to end my trip. And as I said, I, I think I'm still recovering till we meet again, Alberta. I am sending you my love. Thank you to Destination Canada for partnering with me on this video. If you want me to explore more of Canada, hit me up, you know where to find me. And until then, you can click over here to see another travel adventure I've gone on this summer or over here for even more traveling adventures. And I'll see you next time.
Bye.